Let's see how I created with Figma, Cursor, and MCP, a simple application to create prompts that will generate Airbnb icon styles. Let's get started. In this video, I want to show how I take an idea to create a prompt generator and how I implemented the design in Cursor via Figma MCP. This is the application and it generates prompt to create icons like the Airbnb style. I take this idea from a post in LinkedIn. This post by Nikolai, he shared the prompt, so I wanted to take this prompt and create an interface from it to generate the icons faster. I have another video that I will put in the description on the process I did to design this application. I use UX Pilot and ChatGPT to do it, so if you want to take a look, I will add it in the description. In the application, I write here what object I want to generate, with what perspective I want to generate it. For example, I can select front and how many elements I want inside the icon. In that case, I will stick with one. I copy the prompt, paste it in Sora, click. This is the result. You can see the camera in front view. I go one moment to Figma. You can see in Figma all the tests I did, but let's go to the final design. You can see here the application. And after finish the design, I think the design is okay. I wanted to develop it with Cursor. There is one important thing before I import it to Cursor. It's to add names and auto layout to all the layers in the application because it's making the implementation in Cursor much easier. To import it to Cursor, you click here, right click on the mouse and select copy link to selection. Now let's see in Cursor all the process I did. Okay, and I'm in Cursor and the first thing that I do in Cursor is to open a folder and add a text file inside. The text file include all the information about the application. For example, the goal of the application, how it works and some more information about the application. This helps me always to expand the AI, the goal of the application, and I don't need to write it again and again. Once it's there, I write the first prompt. Read this file, app goal and functionality, read only. And then it's give me some summary about what it's read. One thing to mention, if you work with files in the folder, you don't need to do it in the way I did, that I read app goal and functionality. You can mention the file. If I go here below, I click on add and then write app, and you can see this is the file. So if I click on that, there is mention here. You can do it in both ways. Sometimes it's more easy to me to write. Sometimes I want to make a mention, but in general, it's better to make a mention because it's more precise. The next thing is to paste the screen from Figma. You can see here the link. And then I say to it that this is the interface and I want it to create first the visual design without functionality. Because if I ask it to create everything at once, it can start to confuse. So I divide it to small parts. And a part of that, it's helped me to fix the CSS before I move to functionality. Because with wipe coding, I don't know why. The CSS is more difficult than create the functionality. It's taken me more time. But this is how it's worked for now. And one important thing before I execute, I ask it to add all the images in one folder. It's great all the CSS, but the thing is now I needed to take all the images from Figma and paste it on the folder, but the names from the folder and the HTML was not the same. So I asked it to match the names. I said in this prompt that the names of the images in the code and in the files is not the same, and I asked it to match them. It's make all the work and I started to work there on the CSS. It's add all the CSS information, but I wanted to make it like tokens. So what I did, I asked it very easily, organize the CSS with tokens. You can see here the result, it's create all the tokens and make changes in the CSS. Now be aware that you can import the tokens from Figma. I didn't do it in that project, but in other projects I did it. So we can use different approaches here. Now all the CSS file is complete and organized. And now I started to work on the functionality. The thing I asked Chet to do is to create a list of tasks to create the functionality of the application because I didn't want to make everything in one prompt. I want the chat to divide it to tasks. So each task I will able to test before it continue to the second task. And because I'm not a developer, I don't know how to divide them. So I asked the chat to do it for me. I asked it to create one file with all the tasks. So me or the AI will able to check after each task finish. You can see here the file it's created for me. This is task that didn't finish and that is task that finished. And then I ask it to work on the first task. Once it's finished the task, I go to the file and test its work or not. If it's work, I continue to the next one. If not, I ask it to make changes. I started to make one task. Then I ask it to make two tasks. You can see here, I saw that it's easy for it to create two tasks. So I ask it to finish all the tasks. You can see here, it's finished all the tasks. And then I back to the application, test it and make some changes. For example, I ask it to disable the button before the user add all the information. You can see that I write with misspelling, but doesn't matter, they understand it. I make these changes and some more changes. I go to the app test and fix what I want. Like in this case that the cursor was disabled always, so I ask it to fix it. And by the way, if you know CSS and HTML and code, sometimes it's better to do it manually. And I do it also. Sometimes I change the CSS and the HTML 
by myself, but sometimes I want to test the AI to study about it more, so I do it with the AI. After I created all the changes, I ask it to update the JSON prompt. It's added to the code, and then I added the last functionality. This functionality that every time the user click on that, it shuffle one icon type. I ask it to add 25 options there, so it's not work with AI, but it will have long lists of the people that want to test will be able to do it easily. I made some fixes because it didn't work like a shuffle and then I fixed some CSS problem and to be honest I didn't know how to expand the AI what I want so I just write it. When I click on the cards there is movement of one or two pixels in the screen. Fix it. And then I was very surprised because it's understand where is the problem and fix it automatically just by me describe the problem as I do with a developer. And that was very surprised to me to see how I explain it in very easy words and the AI understand it. So now I have this application, I can generate any icons of Airbnb for this interface. By the way, this case is for this type of icons, but if you work in a company, you can create the same project for your company and, and create icons with the style of your company. So it's much easier to work in that way. So if there are brand designers or UI designers and I as a product designer, I not do everyday icons and I want to create an icons easily, it is a great way to add this type of tools to the team. So everyone make the same style of icons and all the team can work much more faster and don't wait that the UI designer or the content or the brand designer will make this for them. So this is all for this video. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. I will see you in the next video. Take care.